Hello everybody, it's Max McAllister from Traction Dynamics. Um, today is, uh, today's video here is going to be a unique look into what it takes to kind of start design a product that never, never existed, have it prototyped, get it produced, and put it in a wrapper. And uh, what's prompted this video is, um, we have got done lots of videos on our, on our passenger grab rail system for the 2018 and up Honda Goldwing. Um, this kit uh, costs $600. Uh, people think that's really, really expensive. And um, you know, I'm you know, not sure why that sticks out to people when you know, there's hardly anything you can buy for a Goldwing that costs less than $500. I mean, when you think of floorboards or highway pegs or stereo upgrade or a saddles a couple thousand dollars, I mean, um, but anyway, I'm not sure. Some people, we get ridiculous comments on the internet where they just stand back and say, well, I wouldn't pay more than $100 for those. Or some, they make ridiculous comments like that. I guess the internet's full of that kind of uh, wisdom. But we want to show you why they cost $600. Um, and then by the end of this, I think you'll probably understand that $600 is a great value for, for this product when you see what goes into making and creating it. So let's pretend uh, you were just decided you saw a need for a product and you wanted to make this product. Well, uh, it's pretty hard to make a product like this from your home garage. Let's, let's start with that. So first you got to do is go buy you about a 7,000 square foot building and you're going to need, you know, 10 employees and uh, lights and camera in action. So there's about a million bucks. So first of all, you take a million dollars and you buy a building. And the building won't be anything you need, but now you got a building and you've hired some people. You got to be able to pay the people. Don't forget about that. Now, so now you got an idea. I want to make some way better for my passenger to safely hold on to the motorcycle. Well, I'm just the idea guy. Uh, I don't have the skill to do three-dimensional three models in CAD, so I have to hire professionals. So we start at that stage. And I bring in my CAD guy, who's Adam Ambrecht, and um, Adam and I work together to create what we believe are models that are going to work. Uh, so he goes away and takes my ideas and my napkin sketches, and he turns them into solid models. From solid models, we send them off to uh, 3D Solutions in uh, south of Atlanta. It does a lot of work in the film industry, and they do uh, 3D printing for us. So we get printed of what the rails look like, just plastic. You know, our first attempt, we missed by so far, it was useless. Um, it was a mess. Uh, so we knew we took a whole nother stab at it. Then we got close. And then we had to take a third and final try. And that's when we got it pretty polished and refined looking um, in the virtual world and then in a plastic printed world. So now, to get to the moment in time where we have good usable solid models and we have printed prototypes that look good and we feel are gonna meet our needs and make our customers happy, I've spent 10,000 more dollars. So now, I haven't made any money, my company hasn't made any money, and I've already invested $10,000 and I haven't cut one piece of metal yet. I haven't even bought any metal. We're just to the point where we got this. So the next step is we need to make some stuff on some machinery. So let's kind of go over here and take a look at what might be involved to do that. <clears throat> so you're going to need to buy some metal. And big trucks come and you have to buy lots of metal um, if you're going to make even 50 sets of these grab rails. It takes truckloads of metal, lots of weight, lots of money. So now you have to buy raw material. Um, you're going to need a complex saw so that you can make accurate cuts on your stock um, so that you end up with usable billets of whatever size for each part you're going to need for each machine. So a saw like this is about $45,000. So you'll need a saw. you got to have that. Um, come on this way. <coughs> this is going to get a little noisier over here, but... So this is, our, this is our machine center here. So this is where we make all the parts that uh, we sell for suspension, obviously, and then also the new things we're doing for Honda Goldwing suspension. 
So in this room, uh, we're not even going to talk about turned parts because everything that we do with the grab rail that we're working with is a milled part. So we hold a block of material and the block is moved in a machine and tools come and cut on it. So we have a standard three axis mill that you'll need to make some of the parts. And then you'll need a mill that has a five axis capability to handle and move the parts. So a mill like this small one over here, you need about $80,000 to buy that. Um, a mill like this equipped with the fixture called a rotary trunnion that lets you do five axis machining. That's about $175,000. So you'll need another quarter million dollars. Um, you're going to have to hire an expert. So this is a guy here, Stan Chadwick, third generation machinist, 30 or 40 years of experience. I don't know. He's forgotten. I forgot, but he's the best in the world. So you got to have a guy like that. So they're not just hanging around. Um, you you got to dig, dig, dig before you ever find a guy like that. Uh, you got to have people to help run the machines that are skilled at measuring, inspecting, and tuning the machines. That's like our guy Jerry Daggett here. Um, we found him from World Superbike and AMA Pro Superbike Racing, one of the greatest leading technicians that's ever touched a motorcycle. So we got to have really smart people to run the machines. Now. We bring those billets in here. <clears throat> and this is our base plate. So this base plate uh, started out life as basically a shoe box of aluminum. It gets one shape cut on it. And then uh, the part is flipped and loaded into different, different places and positions so that we can get to all of the details to finish the part. So a part like this takes four different loaded operations, um, four different setups on the machines in order to arrive at um, a finished part. So if we come over here, so this is one of the operations here. We're taking the base plate and we're finishing these pockets and details for you to bolt the base plate in place of the stock Honda grab rail. So. Uh, this is one of the operations, the final operation that we do on this part. Uh, so this is just the base plate. There's a left and a right. There's the risers that we have to deal with. And um, so the risers are also part of it. Um, and then there's a handle. So the handle runs uh, in this five axis over here. And in fact, we've just gotten it uh, running the handle here. So. <coughs> This is a more complex setup. Um, literally, Stan has, is in the process of getting this set up. Um, now, oh, I also left out a uh, pretty critical component. Um, hopefully, the noise in here doesn't override this microphone. Hopefully, the microphone is good. In between Adam Ambrecht, our, our CAD engineer, is a whole other guy, Brian Felcher, um, from True Precision in California. He takes the solid models that Adam creates and he writes programs that our machines need to use um, in order to make the part. So what you see here is thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of lines of code that are created that tell this machine every move to make. So uh, getting this kind of work done is another several thousands of dollars. Um, again, still haven't cut a chip. Now, from the moment we receive the programs, the programs come here, and then uh, Stan takes the programs, and he has to make fixtures that hold the parts and hold them by the shapes they need. All that's uh, additional work. And then he has to step through the programs, line by line of this code, to make sure that the programs are right. Because all it takes is a decimal place, a decimal point in the wrong place, and this machine will crash into itself and, de and destroy things. Huge, horrible damage can occur. All right, so this is super critical work and it takes really smart people. Now, let's go back over here. We'll get out of this noisy environment for the moment. <clears throat> so for the people that say, I wouldn't pay more than $200 for that, 
Well, you have to understand that by the time I sold the first set of uh, Honda passenger grab rails, we had uh, $12,000 invested in just uh, CAD work, CNC programming, 3D modeling, and, or plastic 3D printing. And I still had not cut one chip on one part yet. Now, to make a set of these grab rails, there is $75 in just raw billet aluminum. Just $75 for the bare metal in block form that no one has touched yet. Now, to complete the parts in the kits, come on back. <coughs> so, <coughs> you can kind of go over there, Jacob. So next comes all of the machining to make the base plates, the risers, and the handles. Um, so there's six pieces in each kit. Um, there's 235 minutes of CNC machine time, not including the human interaction of loading, tuning, checking, inspecting, and deburring the parts. So there's places where we need to take detailed tools and take away edges, make sure holes are clean, and make sure everything's perfect um, before it goes away, then to anodizing. So now, for reference, a CNC machine is going to cost you um, a typical CNC machine is going to cost you one to a dollar to two dollars a minute to run. So 233, 35 minutes of machine time. So add that in. But it's 75 dollars worth of raw material. Um, then they go to a sandblasting company where all of the parts are sandblasted to give them this nice texture that matches the stock Honda bodywork in plastic so nicely. Um, and then they go away to the hard coat anodized. Now hard coating is a very special process. It's, uh, it's more tricky and difficult. And that, but that process results in a coating and a finish that's so hard uh, you can't really scratch it even. Um, it, you almost, you have to, if you wanted to drill a hole in it, you would have to break the surface of the anodized in order to get a drill bit to even go into it. So, uh, so with the secondary processes of uh, sandblasting, anodizing, and then the uh, stainless steel hardware we supply with the kit, there's another $25 there. So, now remember, I still haven't sold one yet. So next is going to come a machine that allows us to package these parts. Come on in here. <coughs> so this is our Vacuum Master packaging machine. <coughs> um, we take the, our parts, they go on this nifty machine, we put a board under them that has our company logo on them, and this keeps them from getting smashed up and scratched up when we ship them to you, right? So they're vacuumed down and they can't sustain any damage. Um, a machine like this is about $10,000, you're going to need one of those, don't worry about that. Uh, just throw that in the budget. <coughs> and then, come on in here. Next, you'll obviously need some place to ship and receive from. Got to have a guy to run your shipping and receiving, unless I guess you could do all of these jobs that I'm talking about by yourself if you had nothing else to do and your only thing you were going to do was try and make one set of Honda passenger grab rails. So, hopefully this you understand now that uh, aside from everything, honestly, the big picture stuff, you know, we have $100 worth of raw materials and secondary processes and hardware. Um, there's about $250 worth of time just for the machines to run the parts. Um, and then uh, uh, our company has to make money and we have to be able to sell the product somewhere along the way to, uh, to our dealers who would like to make a little money off of it as well. So we don't have any distributor level pricing here. We're still a small company. We either buy direct or, you know, we have several companies we work with um, like Wing, Rick Arnaldo and his staff at Wing Stuff. And uh, so many of our installers around the U.S., uh, we have about uh, 10 or 12 uh, independent installers. So all you need <laughs> to sum up is a couple million dollars worth of building equipment, employees. Uh, you need to have an idea. You need to have access to smart engineers, support people, programmers, uh, machinists, on and on and on and on. And when you get all those people together and in the end you produce your very first set of grab rails, uh, you get the luck of having people on the internet say, wow, that's way too expensive. I can't believe it costs that much. So anyway, this is a little insight into what it takes for a small business to produce a product like that.
Now the first thing you might, so some people, again, who are not familiar with uh, manufacturing would say, uh, oh, well, I can buy something that looks, you know, I've bought something in the past that, you know, only cost $49.95 at Harbor Freight. So the difference is it versus when parts are going to be made in very small runs because there's not that tremendous of demand for it, then they are made one piece at a time by a machine. <clears throat> if you were going to be able to sell 10,000 of these or 20,000, you would look at having the parts cast. So casting is a whole different process. You send your solid models off. Uh, someone has to create molds. And then a process, the molds are, you know, a, a mold to make just the rail would be somewhere around thirty or forty thousand um, dollars, and then the, the parts can be made cheaply, but then they're cast metal, um, you know, a cheaper grade of metal and such. Um, so that's kind of one of the differences. If something you're going to be make twenty five thousand or fifty thousand or a hundred thousand of something, the cost to produce it can come way down. But uh, for the people who want to upgrade their Goldwing with, uh, with this new product and a fine, you know, made of that we believe is really superior quality, uh, there isn't that quantity being made. And so we do make them on a CNC machine, which automates it, makes them nicely, but uh, there's a cost associated with that. So anyway, hopefully this is some insight into, into what goes on um, in order to bring up a, a, even just a basic product to market. So I'm Max. Thanks for watching my video and, uh, and uh, please share with your friends. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll keep cool content coming your way.